you know, we're in Albany for a few different reasons. And I think in many ways, um, you, you know, the upstate New York, the western New York area has a huge amount of potential, untapped potential. We're there uh, because um, Rensselaer Polytechnic, the university, brought my brother there. It had a business incubator center where he could start an office. And talented engineers that uh, were um, kind of brought up in an environment where um, they thought they could pretty much do anything they wanted. Uh, you know, very entrepreneurial environment and that sort of thing. The second reason was that there was a business community there that um, was so confident that if they made investments that they can actually keep talent there. And if they offer the right kind of mentorship uh, to those businesses, um, that would be the critical ingredient to keeping them there as well as growing there. So uh, we received a small investment from a group of angel investors led by a fellow, Mike Marvin, who had a previous history of starting a company with a few RPI students. Uh, that was Map Info Corporation and uh, grew to be a several hundred million dollar company uh, and a leader in uh, uh, mapping and location-based information software. Um, and he made a small investment in us. The money ran out in, a, in, a, in about two months. Um, and, um, but the most important thing that he offered us was um, an ability to structure our thoughts and to run our company not only as a creative enterprise, but also as a really competitive business as well. And so he became a mentor and an advisor, a board member. And uh, his philosophy was you hold yourself to the standard of a public company, even if you're a small startup. When you think about your business, when you think about your, uh, your culture, when you think about your customers, when you think about negotiating, um, when you think about uh, what opportunities you want to entertain and how to invest in them. Um, and uh, that made a profound impact on us. Um, you know, earlier in college, just kind of rewinding a couple years back to 96, we finished our first game, Synergist. We delivered the gold master disc over to the customer, which was a publisher in the um, United Kingdom. And they stopped returning our phone calls. They pretty much said, OK, we're done with you guys, and uh, pretty much stole our intellectual property. And uh, as a result of that, we're like, man, we can't just make games. We also need to know how to run a business. And so when he offered to do that, we said, well, actually, this could be a really valuable opportunity for us. And I think that that's the single biggest thing that's allowed us to be successful where most competitors in our industry have failed. Um, you know, we're celebrating our 15th anniversary as a corporation this year. There are very few game creators that have been around for that long. Um, the third element, so we talked about universities, talked about the business community being supportive of fledgling businesses and committing a lot of personal time, unpaid time, to fledgling businesses. The third element was a community that was super supportive both of diversity, um, of new businesses coming in. Uh, the local mayor, uh, one of the local mayors, John McDonald, city of Cohoes. Um, he took personal interest, helped me get married with my wife. Uh, he, he, he presided over the uh, civil ceremony, a number of people in our company, uh, the local uh, law firms with their immigration work. We couldn't find any talented, uh, talent in Albany for the kind of work that we did. So I was on a plane to Moscow, to New Delhi, to Shanghai, to be able to find talent to bring to Albany. But the people in Albany helped us actually get them there and keep them there. So an environment which is very friendly, very tolerant, um, inherently really quite creative, has a really long cultural history uh, and rich cultural history. And I think you know, it was this combination of three things, really. The universities, the business environment that emphasizes mentorship, and a, uh, and a community that made us feel really welcome, that made us start there. And ever since we've grown our business there, today we employ over 250 people. Uh, one of the most productive video game developers in the world right now from a revenue and income standpoint. Um, and just over the last four years, we've invested over $100 million uh, into the local area. Um, you know, last year, we had over 50 schools from the area um, uh, visit our offices uh, with community engagement programs. You know, our, our staff volunteers for uh, uh, um, you know, school projects like robotics programs and other things like that with school outreach and that kind of thing. And it does two things. One is it's a way for us to uh, keep kids in school by saying, 
that something you love, video games, needs a math, science, English, um, humanities education to be able to actually even do it. So they see something that they love and find a reason to be engaged. The second reason is, frankly, it allows our people to put down roots. Every one of these employees come from outside the area. Uh, in some cases, they come there for the first time through RPI or the universities that are there. Over 19 colleges and universities in the Albany area. But it's still a, a lot of work to keep them there. Most people come and then leave. So, uh, but many of them relocate from California, relocate from uh, other places in the Northeast, Boston, um, Seattle, um, you know, other countries and that kind of thing. And we're able to bring them to Albany to make video games. Well, along those lines, uh, it sounds like you, you guys have benefited from the H-1B program. Is that fair to say? Uh, you know, um, uh, we have benefited, especially in the early years, we benefited a lot from work permits and, and green card programs and that kind of thing. Especially since places like Albany you can get certain types of talent and others are really difficult to get. And so H-1B workers have always been a small minority of the total population. At its peak, probably 15 percent. Um, so really far from being any kind of H-1 dependent company. But I would say that provided us a critical talent to grow the rest of the base. You know, today it's probably even lower percentage. Almost all of our hiring is domestic. But it made a critical difference when we weren't able to attract talent from other parts of the country. Um, and the fact of the matter is most of the people that came here on H-1Bs, they have choices of going to other places as well. Um, you know, you know that uh, you, you know, H-1s are not locked in for a particular employer. Uh, and so it's not a tool to retain necessarily. Um, nonetheless, you know, we have a very good retention record, less than 3% um, uh, involuntary turnover on a year-to-year -year basis. Almost unheard of in our industry. Um, so. Um, work permits, talent from overseas have been critical, but they've always been a small percentage, and they've been, they've been kind of an accelerator for the other growth that we've seen in our business.